Hey folks, this is Matt once again. Welcome back to another review. Um, this is again thanks to First Power 100 who had got me a couple of films like Ip Man 1 and 2 and Marin Tao. And he had gotten this off my Amazon wish list. And uh, yes, I do have an Amazon wish list. And he was nice enough, he looked down and he got me this, which was very kind of him. So I definitely want to thank him for this. I have forgotten. <laughs> I looked at my channel, I typed in Giant the Mind. I forgot I actually reviewed this film back in 2010. <laughs> Way back with the old camera and it just looked like shit, it's still up. But yeah, I had reviewed this film really enough. So if you type in Johnny Mnemonic on my channel or you type in Giant the Mind movie review on the YouTube search thing, you'll find my old review from 2010, from three years ago. But... I would wanted to check this film out again because my good friend Mike, O Speed Communications, had reviewed this film. And I'm like, you know what, let me go check this film out again. This is a film, which is kind of a lame cover, it's pretty much just Keanu Reeves against sort of the internet version in this film. This is a film that Keanu Reeves did after Speed. Speed was 1994. This came out in 1995. I guess, you know, because the Speed was a hit, you think, oh, wow, this guy's definitely rising up. And next film he's going to do is Giant in Mind. It's written by William Gibson. And William Gibson is the cyberpunk author who wrote Neuromancer and all these other films. Now he's writing the film. People know who William Gibson is, at least at that time. Keanu Reeves had just done Speed. Now he's doing Giant Demonic. And this is a film that ultimately, I've, back then I was sort of in between on, and even watching it again, I'm very in between on. I don't love the film, but I don't hate the film. Um, I kind of think of this as a nice warm up to The Matrix, or at least The Matrix films, which I thought did this kind of stuff much better. So it was a nice warm up for The Matrix films. And if you're wondering, the Blu-ray, this is what the disc looks like, and there's no extra features, except a trailer. So no making of from back in the day, nothing at all. It's directed by a guy named Robert Longo, which I think this is the only film he's done. I think he did a Tales from the Crypt episode, but he's I think he's mainly known as a painter, like a sculptor and a painter. And this was his first and ultimately his last film he did because the film came out and it bombed at the box office. I know there was talk that a lot of footage that there was some footage cut out. At least William Gibson said in an interview. I know there's a version in Japan that has like ten minutes of footage, mainly to do with the Asian guy who's in this film, played by Takeshi. And not sure if it really would have mattered or, or not, I don't know. I, I've seen bits of that footage, it really wasn't much. The film star Tana Reeves, this is mis fucking misleading. It also says the star is Dolph Lundgren. And I remember in certain marketing and like the poster, like the theatrical poster, is go Tana Reeves and then Dolph Lundgren. Or in certain trailers or TV spots and certain mark. They always say, even here, Keanu Reeves, Dolph Lundgren, Takeshi, Johnny Mnemonic. They always say it starts Keanu Reeves and then Dolph Lundgren, like Dolph Lundgren's second build, except at the end credits of this film. But all the other stuff, it's Dolph Lundgren's second build, but he's not in the film that much, which I thought was really sad because he was really underused. I thought Dolph Lundgren played a very interesting character. It's always nice to see Dolph play a psycho. He plays a character called the Street Preacher, who believes in God, but at the same time, he he's a man for hire to kill people so he didn't get money for his cybernetic implants. And he quotes, not quite the scripture, but talking about God and, you know, sinners and has, like, a beard. And, like, Dolph Lundgren plays a very interesting character, but he's barely in the film. He comes in for, like, like at the 43-minute mark. And then he's only in, like, little spurts. You probably added up probably 10 minutes total at most. And I guess in the Japanese version, he has a little bit more, but it's not that much. 
So I thought that was a bit fucking misleading. Second bill, but he's barely in it. And I thought he was a really interesting villain. That's why I wish he was sort of just the main villain. Uh, but the film itself, uh, the concept of the film, it takes place in the future. I roll it down the year 2021. And there's this virus that has fucked up the place called NAS, N A S, dealing with your, your nerves. So there you have people who get the shakes and so on and so forth. Much, much worse. But Johnny here, played by Keanu Reeves, he's a mnemonic. Now, a mnemonic is a guy, he's pretty much a courier. And what happened was he took a chunk of his pretty much childhood memories out. So they could put these brain implants in. And in the future, they use this to smuggle high-profile data from one place to another. Which, on one hand, is a little bit interesting, but it is... Reminds me later on in the Matrix where you know they plug in and now I know kung fu. So they kind of, I but I thought that worked a bit that worked better than this film. Not only the film itself, but the idea. Just okay, the idea that okay, interesting idea that you have a courier in your brain and you can go back and forth and. But at the same time, like I'm watching this particular film and I'm like, is that really practical? Like if, if tomorrow they said, hey. If you you were for a business, have our brain implant, and you did your high-profile data. You don't want anyone to know. To go from point A to point B, and I'm like, well, is that really that practical? <clears throat> would it really be that practical? Because you would still need to get from a computer to a disc, and then put it into the guy's head. If you have to go that far to get a disc that's like this big, can you just take the disc and you physically have to go from point A to point B? So this whole thing put in your head and like a memory bank is it really that practical would it really make that much sense would it really I know that's a really stupid argument that I, I have to admit it because it was what I was thinking I was like is this really I understand it's sci-fi and stuff but interesting idea but I'm like if they put on a disc and then they just plug into the guy why you have the guy there you just take the disc, put it in, and go from point A to point B. Wouldn't it be the same thing? Only in this sense is we need his head. So I guess, you know, instead of, you know, taking the disc. But you're still them capturing this guy. Either you take the disc or you take his head. It just... But, I mean, I understand that it made for a more interesting film. If it was just a guy with a disc, it would have been just your typical thriller. You know, how many films have you seen where a guy has a disc and... This made it a little bit more interesting, so I understand why they went that route, but I just had a, it's just something I had to, to say. So I understand why they went that route, because you know, it'd be a bit different. But yeah, I just had to point that out. And I liked how you look at the inside of the, you can see the inside of the internet, and it looks really cool. It's kind of like this stuff that's behind Keanu Reeves, you can see really in-depth into the cyberspace. It has a look to it, has a cool look to it, especially later on, which I'll get to, where... Uh, Johnny hacks and uh, the girl here Dina Meyer says what are you doing and he's like I'm making a long distance phone call and how he does that is very cool sort of the time of virtual reality and such was being the headlines and you had films like The Lawnmower Man you had uh, Hideaway kind of did that I mean it wasn't but that's mainly more of the look not really about computers but more of the look but more like Lawnmower Man, uh, Arcade, a few other films that did that sort of thing. Which, by the way, whatever the fuck happened to virtual reality? I remember way back as a kid going to, this is off tangent like always, but it was like a first time and only time little kid, because so, it was a little kid, it was like a bubblegum virtual reality, like bubble and bubblegum. You put a headset on and you... you shoot people but you know it's you know for kids I remember that being such an interesting theory like you could at home have a VR anyway I'm getting off tangent like usual uh, but pretty much Johnny's there as a courier gets to these scientists some bad guys get there before they get there 
he Johnny talks with the scientist and goes, you know, hit me. And the he only has a certain amount of capacity in his brain, and it's almost like double that. But he decides to go at it anyway because this is his one last score, so that he can buy this thing, so they can take this implants out, so he can get his childhood memories back. Uh, but bad guys get in there while he, after downloading, he gets sick. Bad guys get in there. Scientists get killed by the assassins. One of the assassins, again, there's certain interesting stuff, like the one of the assassins has this laser rope. So like a little lightsaber. It's a laser, but it's uh, like one of those wire ropes, but it said wire is a razor. Razor. Laser. Razor sharp laser. But I think some of the stuff uh, that I thought was lacking, I thought Keanu Reeves, I like Keanu Reeves as an actor. I liked him in the Matrix films. I liked him in Speed, Bill and Ted films. But sometimes in this film, I thought his acting was kind of lackluster. I thought he was on and off. I know a lot of people don't think he's a great actor, but like Constantine, I really liked him in Constantine. But here I thought he was kind of hit and miss. There's certain moments I liked with him. Then I thought there were certain moments I thought he was kind of not really the greatest. Like when he's talking to Udo Kier, it's like, you tell me when the meetings. And I'm like, you know, come on, Keanu. I've seen you do better than that. I just thought there's a lot of moments that he's kind of off. I mean, there's certain movies that I mean, there's certain, not only movies, but certain moments that works, but there's certain moments that don't. So, I, I don't know if it just worked better for the Matrix films. It just worked better how maybe he was a little, maybe he learned some tips from Johnny Mark and how to approach in the Matrix films. Uh, maybe if you had a different actor. I mean, I didn't, Johnny, Keanu Reeves, I don't think he is absolutely horrible, but what, if people said, oh, they complain about his performance, I can see where they're coming from. Well, I could defend Keanu Reeves and Constantine. I can defend Keanu Reeves and the Matrix films or Bill and Ted films. I can't really defend Keanu Reeves 100% on this because I thought, again, sometimes his performance is off. This is 1995. I don't know what other actors were really big in 1995 you could have gotten. Um, part of me thinks if Dolph Lundgren was the lead, that would have been interesting. Would have been an interesting idea for Dolph Lundgren. I mean, they're not going to do it, but I, I just, I'm just saying, it would have been interesting for Dolph Lundgren to be the lead, and have you know, I thought you know, be an interesting take for Dolph Lundgren, and I think that would have worked. <laughs> now that I think about it, I keep liking the idea more and more. But the action scenes are. Sometimes they're there, but I mean, I know it was like a twenty-some million dollar budget, so it wasn't like a fifty or hundred million dollar budget. I mean, even the Matrix cost like, I think the first one cost around ninety million or or so. I'm not sure exactly how much. So this didn't have that budget for those uh, action scenes. But to say that I've seen low budget direct to DVD action scenes like Drive and stuff, and I thought not really much into the action when it's there. Um, I didn't really think it was a pulse-pounding cyber slam like WBTV thought. But anyway, getting to the assassins come in, uh, Johnny gets out of there, the scientist is trying to burn the stuff, but then one of the assassins takes the laser thing and cuts his fingers off. And you see the, the fingers hanging there. Okay, you had a little bit of gore, gory stuff. Not too much gore, but a little bit of you know aftermath. Which is cool. Pretty much you find out that these assassins are with this company called Farmercom. And you find out at the end of the day that Johnny has this stuff in his head, which is a cure for this virus, this NAS virus. If you want to call it virus, NAS, he has the cure in his head. And the Farmercom, they want the information because they can make more money, people getting sick and giving them supplies, than if there was a cure. You know, if there was a cure, they'd be out of business. But with no cure, then they could keep, oh, here's some medicine, here's some medicine, here's this and that, and 50 other things we can charge you so you can stay decent. But just if they're cured, then they won't make as much money. Which is sad to say, unfortunately, you can see that happening. 
But when all this is happening actually in Beijing, and he has to get the implant to New Jersey, and he gets there, and we're introduced to Dina Meyer's character, who's this girl who has NES, and at times she gets the shapes. She wants to be a bodyguard, but they Udo Kier, who told Johnny to go there, he's also dealing with this girl, says no. And Udo Kier, I never liked him as an actor. I always thought he was a shitty actor. I don't know if his accent, I don't know what, but every time I saw him, I thought he was just a terrible actor. So people say, oh, it's his thick accent. Okay, fine, his thick accent can get out of my face. I do not like Udo Kier. I don't know what it is. Just every time I see him, I thought he, he sucked. I thought he sucked in Blade. I thought he sucked in this movie. I just always thought he was a terrible actor. You can blame the thick accent. You can blame what the fuck. But don't give a shit. I don't never just never liked Udo Kier. I just had to go on a tangent. He also introduced to Henry Rollins, who plays this guy named Spider, who's a doctor. Uh, Johnny gets to New Jersey, and you know he's a guy who thinks ahead. He, put, he sees a guy waving him over. He puts the thing on the wall before he goes in. Sees his bald guy. Uh, beats this one guy up. And the bald guy says, time to die. And Johnny goes, time? Clicks. And that thing that he set up blows up. And again, like when he says time, like time? I don't know, just sometimes the, the acting is a little bit off. Or the line delivery is off from Keanu Reeves. I don't know what it is. Um, you have uh, Johnny meeting up with Ice T's character, who's sort of part of this rebellion that they want to let people. It's kind of like ludicrous and gamer, and you've seen this on other stuff where they want the truth out, so they are trying to hack through the the internet or the TV to get images of themselves, letting them know, you know, to fight the power, basically. Uh, Johnny saves Ice T, then Ice T throws his knife and kills his guy and saves Johnny. Udo Kier captures Keanu Reeves. Dina Myers, who got slighted by Udo Kier, sees what's going on, beats up the bodyguards, saves Keanu Reeves, to get the fuck out of there. Um, you have this sort of uh, nasty scene where uh, you have the assassin with the laser uh, wire thing, and Udo Kier pisses him off because. You know, he blames Udo Kier for get, letting him get away. Slashes, and you see like chunks of Udo Kier, his body slumped down. I'm like, ooh, ouch. Just me go, ooh, shit. So, okay, I like that bit of business. Uh, but they get chased uh, to the sewers. Uh, and this whole subplot, I didn't really care for. I felt it wasn't needed. This whole subplot of, you have this guy who is helping with the company, talk to, uh, I forgot what the character's name was, Takahashi, I know the actor's name is Takeshi, pretty much, you find out that his daughter had died from NAS a while ago, and then you have this woman who's this ghost in the machine, who you find out was the girl who I just created Pharmacom, she created it, and when she died, she like, got imprinted into the computers. This is like artificial intelligence. And pretty much from time to time she tells them, you know, you need to trying to tell them that they had the cure they could have saved your daughter, telling Johnny to get out of there. I don't know, just that whole thing. I didn't really care for the actress who who did. Sometimes her del delivery was off. But I don't know, just the whole subplot just felt unneeded, it felt unwanted, I just didn't think you needed it. I, I think you could have taken it out, and it just, I guess, you know, someone agreed with me because they took a bit of it out in the overseas, from the overseas Japanese one, I guess, is 10 minutes longer, and they took some of that out, and I can understand why. They should have just taken the whole thing out, dealing with that. I just didn't think it was needed. I didn't think it was much ado about nothing. That's just my opinion. I thought it was just, yeah. okay, let's skip this. Um, and like I'm saying, it's pretty much Johnny and the Dean and Meyer talking with each other. And again, sometimes he words and sometimes Keanu Reeves don't like when he does his delivery, when the girl's trying to talk to him and he goes, what is it, you got parents and stuff? I don't know, just the way he says it. Like, come on. 
Um, but then he gets to a computer and he makes his long distance phone call. And I like the way this is shot. That's what I mean. I like some of the ideas. It's just I didn't think this film was the most exciting film. It wasn't the most thrilling film. I thought it just kind of bogged down at points in the flick. And I thought Dolph Lundgren was underused. I thought Keanu Reeves was kind of off on his acting. It's just, but I like some of the ideas. I like the laser rope. You know, granted, I don't see the practicality of it, but, you know, putting information in this guy's head being a courier. Um, I like Ice-T in the film. Dolph Lundgren, when he's there, he comes in about, you know, like 43 minutes into the film. Uh, I thought he was sort of definitely an interesting character. He hasn't really played too much. Uh, it's always, you know, always nice to see Dolph as a psycho. Well, not always, because I saw Stash House and that movie sucked ass. But... And when I'm talking about ideas like this, making the long distance phone call, and you see from his point of view, he's got the headset, and see his hands, like these sort of gloved hands, you know, going through, touching the phone number, and he's like, I'm making a long distance phone call, and getting to Beijing, looking at the hotel, opening stuff up, uh, looking to the facts, uh, trying to find this, find that, contact people, contact hackers, hacking to this. Uh, just the fact you're able to do that physically, I thought, okay, uh, that'd be actually cool to see down the road if technology ever went that far. Like, if I'm looking on the internet, and I could put it on, and I can, you know, do this and do that, it just makes it more fun than just, you know, on a mouse, it's like, put this headset on, and I can do this, and open this, and, oh, what's this, and I just thought it was kind of an interesting idea. Like, I thought the effects were really good, the, the visuals nice to look at. And pretty much the bad guys come, Dina Meyer throws his pink grenade, fucks up the Yakuza, and then this is when we're introduced to Dolph Lundgren, who's hired by Farmercom. Uh, again, Dolph is like, you need someone brought to Jesus? You know, who is this lost soul, this sinner that I must get to? I just thought it was an interesting character. Like I wanted to see like a whole movie of this guy being the bad guy. You know, uh, I mean, that'd be really cool, really interesting. I don't know who do you pair up as the good guy, because, you know, I'm not sure if Keanu Reeves, uh, I don't know who else partner up. I just, that'd be really interesting. <laughs> Hell, Jeff Speedman <laughs> versus this kind of character. I mean, I don't know, I just, I'm just going off the top of my head. But... Introduce that character. Dina Meyer, Johnny brings Dina Meyer, who's having the shapes to Henry Rollins, who plays his character Spider. Uh, at this time, Dolph is trying to find info what's going on. Meets this guy who has like a sort of cybernetic hand, sort of. Puts it in the. Uh, sorry, itching my nose. Puts it in. Uh, freezes it pretty much and bashes it so it's like a bloody stump. And it's like fucking Dolphin isn't fucking around and you know trying to get info. And Henry Wallace says, I gotta bring you to this guy, gotta drive you somewhere. Then they hit Dolph Lundgren, who gets up. Uh, and he says the line like Holt sinners, but he gets hit. Uh, pretty much Henry Rollins brings him to this hospital where Johnny sees all the sick people, tells him that you have the cure for NAS. Uh, Dolph gets there. A little bit of a struggle, but not much to it. That's what I mean. Like, although Flunder, and you have this guy, and he's really underused. Uh, pretty much Henry Rollins grabs him. The others escape. He's trying to get Henry Rollins to talk. And he's like, you know, who is... Uh, what the hell was the line of dialogue? Yeah. Like, who... I forget what he asked. Like, who's this guy? He's like, Henry Rollins is like, he's the guy that fucks your mother. <laughs> But, you know, he crucifies Henry Rollins. You, you get the idea that he gets killed. Uh, pretty much is getting taken to Ice-T's joint, which is called Heaven. Uh, but before that, you have some assholes who won't let him in. And they're fucking around with him. They drop this car that becomes a flaming car and drops him to Keanu Reeves and Dina Meyer's truck and it blows up. And then I will admit, like, acting-wise, I did like this scene that Keanu Reeves had. I like this monologue. Which is, uh, what the fuck is going on? You know, all my life, I've been careful to stay in my corner. Look out for number one. No complications. Now, suddenly, 
I'm responsible for the entire fucking world. Now, everybody in his mother's trying to kill me if, if my head doesn't blow up first. And she goes, well, maybe it's not just about you anymore. And he goes, listen, you listen to me. You see that city over there? That's where I'm supposed to be. Not down here with the dogs and the garbage and the fucking last month's newspapers they bring back and forth. I've had with them. I've had with you. I've had with all of this. And he yells like, I want room service. I want the club sandwich. I want the cold Mexican beer. I want a 10,000 a night hooker. I want my shirts laundered like they do at the Imperial Hotel in Tokyo. <laughs> I don't know why. I mean, I just always liked that speech. I thought that was a pretty fun speech from Keanu. Like, I like this acting in that film. You know, people may think it's over the top, but I liked it. But they meet Ice T, and they meet this guy named Jones, who you think is a person, but you find out it's a fucking dolphin. It's a dolphin hooked up. Which I'm like, okay, that's kind of interesting, kind of weird. <laughs> Apparently, he was with the Navy, and they hooked him up and stuff. And they pretty much put it in, gets in this gizmo to get the information out. Bad guys come. Yeah, this girl shooting a bunch of bazookas, and Ice T's able to shoot her right in the fucking mouth. But in this action scene, really isn't much for a finale. It's pretty much, yeah, some random people shooting back and forth. Um, the Takish, Takishi, the guy who I say was have been uh, talked to by the ghost of the machine he gets there the girl goes the machine pops up and says you know they could have saved your daughter the guy gets shot by his subordinate the guy with the razor sort of net thing they have a little fight but it's not much for him as him chasing Johnny they get to it so they're dangling on a container okay Johnny takes the thing and cuts the guy's head off okay but I mean it's not much to run home about. I didn't think it was much home to run about action wise. It was just sort of there. It just, it was there. It was alright. Uh, and also, right after you have Dolph Lundgren coming back in, and he's just like, Come to Jesus. And he stabs Dina Meyer in the hand and is fighting Johnny. But then uh, I remember, for some reason, I remember. One time, long time ago, talking to either my friend Mike or Afri, or maybe both of them. Then I was talking to both of them, and I'm like, F "Flipper killed Dolph Lundgren." <laughs> I don't know why I said that. It just made me laugh. Like, "Fuck you, Flipper called Dolph Lundgren." Called, "Flipper killed Dolph Lundgren." <laughs> That's what I should title it. Johnny Mai, Flipper killed Dolph Lundgren. <laughs> Johnny Mai movie review: Flipper killed Dolph Lundgren. And that's what happens, is that Dina Meyer gets this satellite thing, and because the dolphin's hooked up to it, and Dolph, the dolphin, yeah, Dolph, Dolph is killed by a dolphin, weirdly enough. I didn't even think about that, I just thought of that. A dolphin kills Dolph. Dolph killed by dolphin. Because Dolph has a bunch of me uh, metal implants, so it fucks him up, and he burns, and then Johnny shoves something, and then it, almost like the thing from Another World from the 50s, you have these two poles in between, he just sort of gets fried. I'm like, wow, that's kind of... Man, Dolph didn't even put up much of a fight. Like, he didn't even do much to, to counter uh, anybody. It just He just comes in, stabs Dina Meyer in the hand, grabs uh, Keanu Reeves by the head, and ready to fuck him up, and then, you know, Dolph Lundgren ki Flipper kills Dolph Lundgren. <laughs> I was like, I thought Dolph Lundgren was really underused in this. I'm like, okay. He died. He did, 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 did Flipper killed Dolph Lundgren. I, for some reason, I didn't kick out of that. And then he, he hats into his brain. He's fighting this virus program, but it's not much. He pretty much doubles himself. Gets to this thing. Uh, has to loop it with Flipper, who is in there as well in the cyberspace is able to get this last image downloaded from his brain um, I disagree with my friend Mike OCP I know he would have preferred if Keanu Reeves had died at the end because to give it a more of a, a sacrifice but I was fine with that I was I just to be honest when you do that kind of stuff it should it better be a deep as hell movie like a deep as fuck movie but I don't really think Johnny Mnemonic is I mean, they tried to, but 
Actually, I, I won't even say that. I won't even say they tried to. But, you know, him dying, I'm like, oh, God, don't be preachy on me now, movie. Come on. Um, I do like the score by Brad Fidel. I like pieces of the music, like Stabbing West, where, you know, save yourself. I like pieces of the soundtrack. Yeah, I like the score by Brad Fidel, who did The Terminator 1 and 2 and Fright Night, among others. Um, he downloads it from his brain. The information gets out to everyone. Pretty much the movie ends by there. I know I took fucking half an hour to do this review, but oh well. Uh, but Johnny Mnemonic, I thought was again an okay movie. If I gave like negatives and positives, uh, negatives I would go. Canary's acting is off and on in this film. Dolph Lundgren is very underused. Very interesting character he plays, but very underused. Uh, the action is not really much to run home about. Maybe that's not what it's trying to be, but I don't really see how how that could be otherwise. I mean, I guess yeah, sci-fi thriller, but I always thought this was supposed to be an action film, and the action really isn't much to run home about. Uh, you know, the ending was there, but like Dolph scene, it's like, oh shit, we gotta wrap this up, so do it very quickly. And uh, even the fight with the guy with the laser rope thing, it's not m much. It's there. The whole subplot with the girl, Ghost of the Machine, who is the founder of the Pharmacom, I just thought that was entirely unneeded. Uh, I just didn't find that interesting. Oh, yeah, I know. Uh, and the anime, that when the scientists are there and Johnny, uh, Johnny gets there, the anime they're watching, I think it's Wicked City. Uh, I could be wrong, but I'm like, is that Wicked City? I remember watching that one. I remember not minding that one too much. Uh, so you have certain influences of cyberpunk and the Asian culture. I know Keanu Reeves is a fan. I mean, hell, he's directing the man from Tai Chi on doing the Matrix films and stuff. But I just thought this was this was a warm up to the Matrix. I thought the Matrix films did this stuff much better. Of course, they had a bigger budget, but the story was more interesting. The actor was definitely more interesting. I thought Keanu Reeves was a little bit more on the ball in those films. Um, but again. Positives, I like Ice T. I didn't. Keanu Reeves is off and on, and when he's on, I like some of the moments he has, like the little speech he has. Uh, I like Ice T. Dolph Lundgren, when he's there, I like. I, I like the score. I like some of the songs. I like some of the ideas, like seeing you know how he makes a telephone call or hack into his own brain, and the whole ideas are interesting. The whole cyberpunk. Um, set up is interesting. Um, you don't really see, do you really? See, I wonder do we really see a lot of cyberpunk movies nowadays, or did I guess that just died off from the nineties? Maybe the Matrix films you say. I, I don't know. I'm sure there's others. I haven't seen Hackers. I haven't seen that film. Um, so I'm not sure how that film is. But uh, I don't know what more to say. I. Johnny and Mine was always one of those films, even watching Indian. I'm, I'm glad to have it, though, thanks to First Power 100. Thank you. Because I don't hate the film. I like the film okay. I just kind of off and on for me. But I've gone on long enough. It's like 33 minutes to the damn video. But either way, uh, thanks for watching. Take care, and stay tuned for more videos. Later.